There is no country in the region like the Bahamas. And by that I mean this, that we are launching an agile nation with this incredible obligation driven by the politics of the country, the democracy, that if we're going to win an election, we have to meet the political requirements and expectations of people who are spread over 100,000 square miles. And that whilst I'm sitting in Trinidad, I can claim to represent a country that has an island that is larger than the nation of Trinidad from a geophysical point of view. And that my obligations to the people, though few, relatively speaking, who live on the island of Andros, are no different to that of the obligation of the government of Trinidad. So just as Trinidad will ask for a four, or Barbados will ask for a four, or St. Lucia will ask for a four, I have to ask for a four for 10 different items. I then have to ask for a four for different keys that we small, small, small items. So I have to replicate or duplicate infrastructure. <coughs> the Bahamas is complex in the context of there being a compelling need for innovations on creative policies, pushing the envelope and being able to get the private sector to understand that we must necessarily be in partnership one with the other. That is now a personal philosophy that I as my minister believe that for my country to be able to do the things that it should do, that it could do, we must be innovative and we must recognize the necessity of having a partnership with the private sector as much as that can be. As can be seen in practice around the world, private public partnerships can be extremely complex and they do vary widely in structure and mode of operation. At the very basic, they simply constitute a contractual agreement under which the private sector both provides a public sector service or manages public sector assets that would otherwise be provided or managed by the public sector and assumes substantial risk in the process, be they financial, technical, or operational. The main reason that governments would contemplate such arrangements is that they offer the possibility of an improvement in value for money for the government. This is achieved through the transfer of risk to the private sector, where it is best placed to assess and handle those risks. The improved value for money is also secured by the fact that where it is a private sector, where it is private sector capital that is employed and at risk, the economically efficient planning and operational decisions are made. That in turn should lead to both better quality services and lower cost services. Governments have also turned increasingly the public-private partnership as a means of maintaining much needed levels of public infrastructure investment in the face of challenging deficit and debt conditions. Through the implementation of these partnerships, the financing needs of projects appear on private sector balance sheets rather than those of the government. I must stress though, that such a consideration should not be the main driver for the initiation of any private-public partnership project, which I believe must first and foremost be driven by the efficiency objective. <coughs> to pursue these partnerships merely for the fiscal benefits could, may, 
prove illusory and lead to unsatisfactory results for both government and the public. 